Today we'll look at how to better hear intervals in three steps. The first step is to classify the interval into one of three categories, either perfect, consonant, or dissonant. Second, we'll listen for how far apart the intervals seem to be. And then third, we'll look at the quality of the interval, either major or minor. So first, we'll classify. The perfect intervals tend to have a hollow quality. Consonant intervals tend to sound pleasant, and dissonant intervals might be called crunchy. After that, let's try to figure out how far apart the two notes are, as intervals can often sound very similar to their own inversions. Let's look at the perfect intervals first. Unisons sound like the same note, because they are, and octaves sound like the same note, just further apart. The perfect fifth and the perfect fourth sound rather similar, as they are inversions of each other. So let's listen for how far apart they are. Here's the perfect fifth, and here's the perfect fourth. Hear how the perfect fifth is just a little bit wider than the perfect fourth? Also for me, the perfect fifth sounds more stable and more hollow than the perfect fourth. For consonant and dissonant intervals, we're not only listening for distance, but also for quality. Are they major or minor? In general, major thirds can be relatively easy to hear because of the major chord. In a similar way, the minor third is best heard as a part of an outline of the minor chord. The minor third is the first two notes in that chord. This is the closest together that any consonant intervals can get. We live near a train drag. The minor six can sound a lot like the major third because they're inversions of each other. So here, it's really helpful to listen for the distance. You can hear how the minor sixth is much further apart than the major third. Some people also prefer to hear the minor sixth as just a half step further than the perfect fifth. And then the major sixth is the inversion of the minor third. But with the major sixth, you can hear the implied harmony of the major chord. The dissonant intervals have some easy ones and some not so easy ones. Minor seconds are super close together. It sounds like the leading tone at the end of a scale. The major second is just a little further apart, a whole step, and it sounds like the first two notes of the scale. So for seconds, listen to whether or not it sounds like the beginning or the ending of a scale. The major seventh also sounds like the first and seventh scale degrees. It sounds like Do jumping up to T. So listen for the implied octave above. To me, the minor seventh is the trickiest of all intervals. For some people, they think of it as an octave minus a whole step. For others, it's an implied dominant seven chord. At this point in my musical journey, I hear the minor seventh as an augmented six, but I do not recommend that strategy. And then there's the tritone. The tritone can sound like a lot of things as well. You can hear it as part of the dominant seven chord. This is why some people can confuse the interval of a tritone with the interval of a minor seventh. You can also hear the implied resolution of the tritone to the major third. Or if you somehow accidentally summon the double, you'll know that the tritone was played. There are other methods for better hearing the intervals. For example, having a particular song that you associate with each of the intervals. I've made a video about that, and there's a link above my head. If you have other methods for hearing intervals, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this episode of Two Minute Music Theory. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss an episode. Also, be sure to check out my other channel, Jesse Strickland Music, which is home to all of my compositions. And if you're the kind of person who uses social media, be sure to connect with me over there.